just wanted to talk about the evolution of just how much it's changed and how, like, where did this even start? Like, what do you think was the catalyst for how fast we've turned from, oh, no, I don't even suck dick to now I can't even scroll pat through my feed without this girl does OnlyFans now. She's twerking. This, I like, guess, crazy now. The, the, nah, Bernice. Jack? Bernice? Really? People, people really don't understand the influence that Bernice has on our modern culture with women. People don't, people don't give her the credit. You think like Bernice is like the the Beyonce of that that world? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when Drake got spotted with her, and that oh, was yeah. what like blew her up and shit. Yeah. And like niggas went to Instagram, and it was over after that. Every ever since then, the Drake effect is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ever since then, the That's IG a, model thing has a become thing. a thing because of that. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Lunchroom Podcast, back for another episode. If you don't know by now, it's your boy, Dapper Dan. Across from me, my guy Fritz. Next to my guy Fritz is my guy Ray, a.k.a. the movie guy. And behind the camera is my guy Fredo. How y'all doing? Chilling, man. It's been rainy as shit. You know, my, my clothes just, just dried up. We yeah. was, you, it was, you know. My feet Actually, are really soaked. Yeah, we're walking, walking, walking down there. Because I did not want to have mad thoughts on my body. Oh, so yeah. yeah. That would have been bad. Yeah, he got the orange. I got the you gray. You jacking is a poor orange. look. You look poor if you have, like, rain on your You clothes. just look real. Just right. dead. I mean, is that still in looking home movie? <laughs> yeah. um, if, you're, if you're Kanye, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I mean, what Kanye does be in, so yes. But um, today with us, as you can see, on if you're watching on camera, not listening on streaming services, we have a guest in the building. Yes, sir. And um, I don't know if this is a Ray. Uh, Ray brought this guest to the table, <laughs> so I don't know if he told you, but on this show, I I'm the A mic here, but I don't introduce the guests. The guests introduce themselves because right. you got a mouth and you know more about yourself than I do. <laughs> so true. true. <laughs> with that being said, you can introduce yourself to the people. Where they can find you, so on and so forth. Okay. He got two phones, so that means it's important. <laughs> nah, sure. <laughs> um, but um, I'm Rambo. Um, I'm a photographer. Um, I'm from Long Island, New York, five one six. You can follow me on Instagram at Living Legend underscore underscore. And yeah. All right. So with that being said, let's get into it, man. Rambo. What's up? What led you to your? Uh, is that was this your? Your full time profession? You do this full time? Yeah, I've been doing it full time since I graduated high school. That was in 2015. So yeah, pretty much. All right. So what? Take us down the steps that led you there. What's? It pretty much started from. I used to like be like really into fashion and shit, and I used to like want to show off my outfits and stuff like that. So I used to have my friend dubbed on a blog for me, take pictures of me with his dad's camera, and then. Eventually, I got, you know, tired of always fucking asking him to do, what, can I curse? That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. I bet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I got tired of, like, always asking him to, like, you know, come around and take pictures of me and just asking him to do the most. So, I just got my own camera. So, I take pictures of myself. Then, from there, like, escalated to, like, start taking pictures of my shoes and posting them on Tumblr and shit like that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on Tumblr, yeah. And then I'll go the and pics. just started bringing the camera to school and just taking pictures of my friends at school. And um, from there, my first, like, real, like, shoot, like, mm-hmm. my first, like, real, like, opportunity was probably shooting for my guy, Ev, um, Murder Bravado. He has a brand called um, um, Who Decides War. And um, he gave me that opportunity probably, I think it was my senior year of high school, yeah. And... um. That was my first time putting myself on that like big stage and getting the opportunity to like you know really do it as something other than just you know like a hobby. Right. And then from there, I never really looked back. That's pretty much how it started, you know. Has yeah. it always been like a smooth sailing type of thing? Like, what has been like the most challenging thing that probably, you've faced? Probably like the most challenging thing I'd say is just staying inspired. Mm. Because like when I was younger, it was more like something fun to do. It's still fun, don't get me wrong, but like as you get more like as you go further along the journey and like you're trying to 
figure out new things to do and new concepts. And you have an audience that you have to entertain mm -hmm. along with, you know, doing it for you. You kind of like fluctuate between, am I doing it for the wrong reason? Am I doing it, is my work like just trying to please people or is it pleasing me? Mm -hmm. And like, I've gone through a lot of stages in my art with that. And um, that's probably like probably been the most challenging thing. Like right now, I haven't really been shooting that much because the ideas I have right now are just kind of like really out there. And like, I'm really trying to figure out how I can accomplish them, but it's just, I don't know. It's just a lot of stuff that goes into it because they're really extensive ideas, but that's just a part of the craft. It's, it, everything just takes time. Um, I noticed that you shoot in film yeah. as opposed to digital. Why, like, why do you prefer film over digital? I actually always was a digital guy. Mm -hmm. Like I always was actually, I just talk shit about people that shot film. Like <laughs> honestly and truthfully. It's um, the I still talk shit about people that shoot point and shoot. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? Like, <laughs> like I just, I definitely talk shit about that shit. But, um, I still talk shit about point and shooters. If you shoot on the point and shoot and that's all you do, like you literally just, I don't know, that's, that's your prerogative, but I don't know. But um, yeah, I've been shooting digital since I started. Like I always shot Canon too. Like that's that's my shit. I fuck with Canon. I like the colors, like how it feels and everything like that. And um, recently, like within like the past year, I started to get more into film and shit. I bought a point and shoot funny enough but i didn't really like it um because it just with um with a point and shoot it's literally just pointing and shooting it like anyone like anybody could pick up a point and shoot and just click it so it just wasn't as engaging for me so instead of that i bought um a mamiya rz67 that camera is like pretty expensive but i always wanted it because one of my mentors had it from a really long time ago yes when i just recently bought it like all my stuff i've been posting is on yeah, you look through it. I wish I would have brought my bag in here, but it was raining. Yeah. But um, yeah, so like, you look through it, and it's just like a way more like engaging experience, and I just love it. It's just really fun, like the sound it makes. Like that's why I really wish I brought this. So I could show you the sound it yeah. makes anything. But like, it's just it's really fun. Like that's that's what it is. Like it brought back the fun to photography for me. Like it's because it was starting to get a little dry and starting to get like a little like you know when you like let's say like you're a basketball player, you're just doing reps all day. Like it just, it just became like more muscle memory okay. instead of like just being like fun and figuring out new new things. Like and you like to be challenged. Exactly, yeah. I like to be challenged. So mm -hmm. when I got that camera that I have now, it's just been so much more fun. Like I've been going back and learning more about photography and things I wasn't doing before. And it's just been a lot more experimental. And yeah, that's probably why I transitioned to shoot a film. Who would you say is like one of your bigger influences to my photography? Yeah. Um, probably, I would say, probably Gordon Parks. Or, like, I like a lot of, like, the old school rap photographers, like Jonathan Mannion and stuff like that. Uh, I like a lot of the experimental stuff, too, though. But it's just, like, those pictures that... I, I, used to, I just really liked how people back in the day took their image. Mm. Like, nowadays, like, I was... I went through that phase of, like, shooting rappers. Like, I shot a whole bunch of rappers and shit. And I was doing it like around that time where like it wasn't as common, you know what I'm saying? But now, and even then I got tired of it because they're just so boring. <laughs> like people don't really like care to put a, put a concept together or like to like really go in depth with how they present themselves to the world because Everyone is just so like I don't know in the moment. I niggas guess niggas be just trying to look the same. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. niggas be trying to look the same, and people just be wanting to flex. Like it's no like really it's thought. Not for the art, like, yeah, it's not for the art. Mm -hmm. It's just to take a picture yeah. and 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 it lacks creativity. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like now it's just like I don't know. Like it, it's it's sorry to cut you off. It's yeah. funny to hear you as a photographer say that because yeah. me as a consumer watching like music videos, for instance, yeah, like that in itself is not as creative as it used to be. So exactly. to hear a photographer say that, it's like hand in hand. I'm not the only person that said that stuff too because like I have a lot of friends that shoot and a lot of them don't like shooting rappers anymore either because it's just boring. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, my influences really come from like that generation of taking pictures of rappers and documenting moments that like really stood out. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, Gordon Parks is probably like my biggest inspiration because, you know, I don't know if you know who Gordon Parks is, but he was one of like two, basically the first black photographer to really get 
that notice. Like he shot for Vogue and he shot Malcolm X. He shot um, Muhammad Ali, like a lot of Ali's pictures and stuff like that. Shot a lot of the Panthers and stuff like that. His his work was just really impactful. And um, my favorite Gordon Park shoot probably is this series he did where he like put up a black baby doll and a white baby doll. And he had these black children sit at a desk and like pick which one oh, like appealed like, to them. It's like a spirit. It's a spirit. spirit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And sadly, a lot of the kids picked the white yeah. one. But like shit like that is like the stuff that I really enjoy because it evokes emotion. It evokes thought. And that's really where I want to take my photography. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. We're trying to like figure out a way to put all these pieces together to get to that end result because for a long time I wanted to do that but it's just a lot of things that go into it but yeah um like coming up were you like self-taught did you have like people around you that may have been like like that helped you get into like photography and things mm-hmm. like that that nature or like because I know when we talked to you I know you know like Andy yeah you know mm-hmm. like that um at the beginning I was mostly self-taught um like to probably to like because I was shooting since I was for like eight years now I think and I started probably like I think it was like 2014, 2013. And until like 2015, it was mostly just like all me. But then I started to go around with my friend Javon, whose um, ad is Made by Japan right now, I think. It used to be Japan Logos, but it's Made by Japan. He went to my high school, and we used to take pictures. He was a photographer also. And um, he just taught me a lot at the start. And um, that was when I like really started to dive into it. And it used to be a lot of fun to me at that time. We used to go everywhere, like explore everything, like abandoned places and shit like that. And I was probably like the first person to really teach me anything about photography. And then from there, I met Andy, and I was, um, his ad is already successful, and he taught me a lot that I still use to this day. Javon too, but you know, but like um, Andy taught me a lot more technical stuff, and he um, was a really harsh critic. Like to this day, Andy still doesn't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. Like, like, to this day. And it's like, because that's just who he is. Like, he just doesn't like to um, have a certain number of followers. Like, I think it's like 250. And he refuses to follow me. I don't know why. Because, like, now he likes my work a lot more yeah. than he did when, when um, we first met and shit like that. And um, I always appreciated that, though, because... That. Exactly. And um, you always hearing, like, you're so good, da 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 And in your head, you're like, I want to be better. So when you, hear, when you have somebody that's like, telling you that you're not good and how to be better because they see it in you that you can be, it means a lot. And um, I always I always tell him how much I appreciated that because it wouldn't have gotten as far, I don't think, if I didn't meet him. And then um, I had another guy, um, fuck, I forgot his name. It's not, it's because it's like, I never met him in person really. I met him once, but um, we talked a lot through Instagram DMs and he does a lot of fire shit too. But um, yeah, those three probably were probably the most instrumental people in my photography, for real. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Do you, do you have, like, so I'm going to have, like, a favorite shoot that you have to That I've done? Yeah. I've done so many shoots. <laughs> um, nah, I don't have a favorite shoot. I have a favorite photo I've taken. Okay. Well, I won't even say it's my favorite photo. I, the most iconic photo I've ever taken, to me personally, is, is this photo I took of Playboy Cardi at the show he did right after um he dropped the self-titled album. Mm-hmm. Like, it's pretty much like one of his most iconic pictures and I'm probably like that's probably like my biggest identifier like to this day I saw people they'd be like oh my god you took that photo and I'm like yeah <laughs> but um that's probably like my most iconic photo but my favorite like subject to shoot is probably my friend um, Guaco Wole like I love capturing him I've been doing it for a while now like since like 2017 and um it's just really fun every time that we link up like the chemistry that we have and um, it's just because, like, the way he dresses, he has a brand and all that stuff. So, like, it's just a lot to build off of shooting with him. And, like, it's so seamless every time. And, like, every time we shoot together, it just feels like we're leveling up. Like, it's never, like, a shoot we did, like, two years ago is the best shoot we've done. Like, every time we link up, it just keeps yeah. keeps getting up. better and better. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we talk about film and stuff a lot. Yeah. And shows in general. So, like, for whatever reason, do you have, like, an inspired show or film that maybe helped you inspire a, like a photography subject mm-hmm. maybe like a certain shoot or something like that like I know we talk about c- cinematography and stuff yeah, like that. yeah. So, like, cinematography is a big yeah. big influence to my photography because I try and um, make every shoot I do like look cinematic I look yeah. like a movie still or something mm-hmm. like that's that that's a great way to put your style yeah yeah I, 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 that's probably 
that's probably if I had to pick one word to describe my photography, it would be cinematic. Like I just try every time I shoot to like make it look like a movie. And that's what I want to be in the end as a director. Okay. But again, a lot of things go into making movies and stuff like that. But um yeah, so probably the biggest influence on my photography, movie wise, T V wise, probably be like Quentin Tarantino movies. Mm-hmm. Like the way that Tarantino shoots his films always really like stuck out to me. Um my favorite Tarantino film. My favorite Tarantino film. Hmm. That's just such a hard question. I just love all those fucking OD, movies. Bro. I feel like my shit changes every time. That's what every I'm day. saying. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I, like, I couldn't name you one of the time. His, his favorite Scorsese movie is Raging Bull. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite Scorsese movie. That's why I asked him because it's like, that's not my, Raging Bull isn't my preferred choice for me. Yeah. Probably, I would say, damn, that's such a hard question. I'm going to say Jackie Brown. Mm. I'm gonna say Jackie Brown. That's an, that's an instant choice. Yeah, I, I don't think you, I've ever heard anybody say that. That's usually yeah. not. What, really that's usually favorite, not what somebody. It's not my favorite. Um, film. Yeah, I'm gonna say Jackie Brown. But yeah, I'm gonna say Jackie Brown. Damn, I gotta stick with that one. But yeah, so Tarantino was a really big effect on my photography. I would also say that on um, maybe um, Fight Club. Fight Club, just that movie, influenced me a lot in terms of my photography. Like. The wide shots that he did in that shit, mm-hmm. crazy. Like I just, I just love that like movie. David yeah, 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 Fincher. That was Fincher. Um, Fight Club, and <laughs> and um, Enter the Void. I have okay. as my screen background. That's yeah, that's, that's that's another one because like a lot of my work in the past has been shot on wide lenses. Mm-hmm. Like I love that view. It just seems a lot more human to me. And um, that just came from, you know, watching movies because, you know, on the widescreen and shit like that. So that probably probably be the biggest takeaway. That and, like, the colors of, like, grading and stuff like that that you see with, like, Tarantino and um, other filmmakers like that, like um, Scorsese and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. My, my last question would be, okay, so if there was a photographer out there for me to think about becoming a photographer, mm-hmm. what are three things that, I guess... Don't give them three things they should be good at. Give them yeah. three things they expect in the reality of becoming a photographer. Hmm. Like what it comes with becoming a photographer. If you want okay. to be good. Oh, okay, yeah. Point, not just a point and shoot. Like you yeah. Said. Mm-hmm. Like probably the biggest thing I would say that comes with this shit is like there are going to be moments where you doubt yourself for sure and you got to have the resilience mm-hmm. to like push past those moments because you're not going to be inspired all the time. It just doesn't work like that. And um Second time, the second thing I'll say probably is um, don't be discouraged, you know, like just keep pushing at it, like, and always make sure that you're still having fun while you're doing it. Because I'll be able to check myself with that a lot. Like, there are moments I'm just going, 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 going. And I'm like, wait, am I still having fun with this? And it's like, no, sometimes. And when that's happening, you got to draw back. It doesn't matter, like, what's going on. Like, because end of the day you're doing this for you right and like the, the whole point of doing being an artist and stuff like that it's supposed to be like a therapy it's supposed to be a a way to have a happy life a fulfilled life instead of you know working like a nine to five whatever it is that you don't want to do so it's like why would you be unhappy doing what you love you know what i'm saying so you always gotta check yourself about that and um my third thing that comes with it i don't know if i would say comes with it but my third thing my my, my plan of advice is just to um not look around Look, look, look in the mirror, look inside and just always try and um, make sure that your shit is just different and unique and develop a style that is you. Because when you start falling in with everyone else, it's like there's nothing really to you. And you're just going to be another person with a camera. And it's different between being a photographer and being an artist. I say that all the time because like some people like want me to do certain things and I'll do them but it's like that's me being a photographer it's not me being an artist and you always gotta remember just the difference between the two a lot of people don't really know that and um yeah that's pretty much my best advice is just always make sure that if you if that's what you want to be an artist to remember that and don't get sucked into what's making you money or like what is getting you a quick buck because being an artist is going to pay tenfold way more if you make that piece that's going to sell for a million so that just always remember that Talk to him, man. Nice, nice, nice. All right, but with that being said, we're definitely going to close the interview, interview section of this and hop into our show shenanigans. So with that being said, we're going to hop into the first section. It's called the Lunch Line Chatter. For those that might not know because we have a guest, might bring in some new viewers. 
Our lunch line chatter is basically our current event segment. With that being said, here we go. That is a drop for it. Shout out to Ice T. Like I said, that means you get. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, first to- the topic we have for today in lunch line chatter is the NCAA. Uh, they finally allowing players to make money off their likeness, the brand, you know, the whole vibe. So yeah. this Show is a ball fight. Ball. This is a f- that's, a, that's the point of this thing. I'm that this is a fight that they've been fighting forever, for pretty much. Since there was color TV, you know what I'm saying? So, talk to us. How y'all feeling? This was a conversation that we had on our first pod. Right. Like, it. this is a long time coming, bro. Mm. Um, there has been too many cases where uh, men and women have lost their scholarships or um, had to have choose been suspended between, yeah. or having to choose between making this amount of money or being able to play. Like, it, it has been a ridiculous thing that... I'm glad this monopoly won't be able to monopolize everything. Mm -hmm. You know, people will be able to make money with their likeness. We'll be able to get video games again, fucking NCAA football and stuff like that. Yeah, they were talking about that. Yeah, bro, like that was stopped because niggas wasn't making no money off of it. Yeah. So that, like, I feel like it's gonna be a a whole lot more opportunities for so many more individuals, man. So I'm I'm happy for everybody involved. Yeah, for sure. Cause like for me, like I'm big into like the high school basketball scene, and like a lot of the, some of the high school basketball kids that went to um college last few years. There's a squad called like they call themselves um Jelly Fam, and Whoa. like they dad was like known for like crazy layups, yeah. whatever. It's a whole squad of them, and like they couldn't make no money in college. And like niggas was using their shit all the time. Like niggas call shit the they jelly, jelly now, and they can't make no money off that NBA. shit. Yeah. They ain't make no money off that shit because they can't because they went to play college ball. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just it's this is just great to see. And you know what I'm saying? I want to lob this up. We got to thank Levar Ball. Facts. Yeah, shout out Levar. Yeah. That man was ahead of his time. Feel me? And they called him crazy. Like, and they they cool. they call mm-hmm. the geniuses crazy. I mean, yeah. that's what they do. So so why are we? Thinking Lavar Ball. We're thinking Lavar Ball because again, if people don't know, he kind of started this domino effect. The reason why you know kids are electing not even to go to college. The reason why the NCAA did this is because whatever it could have been one percent, two percent, they started to lose money because mm-hmm. because of Lavar Ball. There was people, there's other options now. Exactly. Yeah. He made it known. People have because of Lavar Ball. People were like, we're not going to go to college. We're going to go straight to the pros overseas mm-hmm. and just be able to come to the A after that. Then what happened after that? And the it was NBA. like, yo, G League, y'all can just come straight to the G League yep. now. <laughs> and less and less, like you said, more and more options. And because of that, NCAA had to do this. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he made that on, what's it called, the JBA? Yeah, JBA. Yeah, oh, he, made, he made the JBA too. Man, that, was, that was a bullshit league. But it was cool. <laughs> it, 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 you know what I'm saying? I had a good idea. That came before having the big three, though. After I think, I, I, I thought there was yeah, but the big three was for the veterans. The JBA was an option for college yeah. people, college oh, okay. uh, college kids to go to. Okay, so, that's fire. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, I like child of old ball too. But also, this made me think about like, yes, this is a W for the you know the future generation stuff like that. But I also, I also hope that the people that were done wrong. Because of NCAA, mm-hmm. you get some reinstation for me. Reggie, like, Reggie like, like fucking for me, like Reggie Bush for mm-hmm. me. They say he cheated, did all of this. Mm-hmm. They, let's get his trophies back. Even Chris <laughs> Webber. But we say Chris <laughs> Webber. <laughs> Yeah, Chris Brown was like, "Yo, who do I who do I call?" Like, he was like, who? I didn't, even, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even know Chris Webber had said something. I just that was on Twitter. Somebody had retweeted it or oh, liked shit. it or whatever. Yeah. And um, somebody had made a meme with Reggie Bush. He was like, "It's the um, shit with um, Big Boy from ATL." He's like, "I know that ain't who I think." <laughs> 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 Little Big Brother. And then I on the way over here, I just read that supposedly um, freaking. Masterpiece son. You just signed a two million dollar deal. Yeah, a tech deal. But you yeah. already know Master P is gonna get that money. No, that's a fact. <laughs> I, I, one day we gotta do a Master the, P the appreciation. He's like, he deserves. Two million for him, he deserves. Yeah. It's his bread now. And yeah. like, who knows? Even it could be a non rapper seed could get a mill deal based on just their likeness. Mikey yeah. gonna make Zion, so much money. Like Mikey, Zion Dior, Johnson, so all these dudes, bro. Zion would have made more than a million dollars. I'm saying, like, Bronny? Bronny's making no, Bronny Bronny make some money. Bronny's probably worth right now. He's not even like done it, done much, and he's probably worth like five, six million yeah, right now. Yeah, bro, just off his name. That's, like, that's crazy. crazy. He'd be streaming bro. too. Yeah, he's facts. Yeah. Yeah. That a streamer. Um, he's part of the face like, clan. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's and a big ass clan, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like a, it's like a gaming yeah. team. Bro. Yeah, they have a lot of those. Don't yeah, bro, yeah. but that's like a top five yeah. team. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like a content creation collective. Oh shit. 
Uh, that's crazy. Well, shout out to, I mean, not shout out to NCAA, but fuck fi- NCAA. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for finally doing what you were supposed to have been doing. You yeah, bitch ass. Shout out to Levar Ball. Shout out to Levar Ball. Ball. Yeah. Shout out to Melo. Lamelo, La not not Carmelo. <laughs> Carmelo in some hot shit right Yo, now. Yo, <laughs> bro, bro, that shit is crazy. I don't even want to get into that. Yo, <laughs> Melo, man. Oh but so we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna switch gears. I like showing the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna switch gears and hit the microphone check. Yes, sir. So with the microphone check, we got a little pat segment for y'all. First thing I want to get into is something I wanted to bring to the table for y'all. I wanted to know, because it's a conversation that comes up often on Twitter, timeline, anywhere, you know, talking music. How do y'all intake new music, yeah, new, chat, yeah, talk about this shit. you know, new music, new albums, and how long do you think you, if you have to wait till you can give a fair critique on it? Because for me personally, I feel like when it comes to this, a new song, I'll give it probably one or two spins, and I'm not. I know if I'm gonna bump this again or not. Like, and within that day. With yeah, one or two spins right there. The album though, I gotta let that ride for like a week, mm. at least. How many times you listen in a week? I'm probably to at least three to four times in that week. Okay. Different mm. moods, different time periods, just to see. Maybe I gotta intake this. Different settings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Maybe this is a, this is a car ride. Yeah. Maybe it's not in a, they're sitting in the crib. You know what I'm saying. This maybe some music is just different settings. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. to me in different moods. So that's just my take on it. Uh, um, wait, which one am I answering? The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bet. <laughs> All right. So like for me, like my terms of critiquing the album is like. I could listen off the first listen and I know if I like that shit or not. But another thing I have to say about critiquing, I was talking about this with my friend the other day, is that a lot of people don't know the difference between being a critic and personalizing your critique of art piece. Mm-hmm. Like, I could listen to something and know it's not for me, mm-hmm. but know it's good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But um, a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people just listen to something and be like, it's trash. Because like, they don't like it. Because they don't it's like not it. That's not true. That I, I, I <laughs> this, bro. To, this. I lean more towards my side, guys. But there is sometimes where I'm like, no, that's just a bad song, my nigga. Bro, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Because I already know that shit get me tight, too. Like, like I remember when, when Cardi dropped Whole Lot of Red. Like, a lot of niggas ain't like that shit. But them same niggas like that shit now. And I knew of the first listen, I like that shit. But some people just can't just take themselves out the equation but for me like i said first listen i know because of the first listen you know if you're gonna listen to that shit again and, and i and i don't mean like a listen like you with people and you talking over the music i'm talking about when you like really intent to intently listening to something you know if you want to listen to that shit again but so for me yeah first listen yeah the first listen definitely matters to me a lot too like mm-hmm. like you said the first listen i know within the first probably 30 seconds of the beat and if there's words being rapped by then i know i'm gonna bump it again exactly too much for like a song yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a song album album i gotta make it through for me i gotta at least make it through the album in order to know i gotta i'm gonna bump it again mm-hmm. i like to give it a fair shot like i just fight even if i, I can't get it on the first listen, i just fight through it i might not go to it if I'm back, but I'm, like, nah, I ain't even going I might front. not go back, but I'll at least I'll give There's it the I ain't even going front. If you missing by the fifth track, I'm turning the shit off. <laughs> it's over that, with. Yeah, that's real it's shit. It's over dude. with. I'm not listening. And not, I'm not even going to call it trash. I'm just going to say, mm-mm. Like, I'm not, nah. I keep bringing it up because I'm really disappointed. J. Cole? Yeah, that J. Cole album was really a struggle to try to listen I, to. I hate, I hate J. Cole, and I, I, and I like the album. That's what I was saying. I'm not a, I don't hate him. I mean, I don't hate him. I don't hate the album. It's not like LeBron. I don't hate him. But like, I'm not a fan, and I like the album. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah, and you a like, big he, fan. Yeah. I don't. And I, that's I guess one of his loyalty albums. This is a a column for a different day. I just want to know what people don't like about it. To be honest, because yeah, I mean, this, this yeah. is his best project too. ever. No, but it's no. something to say. Yo, this is complete garbage. Absolutely, Man, it was not. better it than Forest Hills garbage. Drive. I, nah, I, what? It was better than that. Forest Hills Drive is a top two I fucking hate that album, album, bro. bro. Wow, nigga. People hate that album because of Wet Dreams. I, I can't front. Oh, That's the first song that came to my head, bro. People just hate the song because of Wet Dreams. Like I understand the Wet Dreams ain't the best song. Um, <laughs> You know, he, 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 he be honest. He be I'm honest. Just, I'm just weak because that's the exact song I was thinking about when I was bro, saying I hate exactly. that album. It says the same thing with dreams. Like, for me, I'm like, damn, I think you guys seen the video. He always got a weird one on there, like his folding it clothes. Like he, he, it's just corny. Everyone hit it. Yeah, I don't like that shit. But I, I like that shit. J, J. Cole's talking his shit on that album. I'm talking uh, that shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> J. Cole has a bad, like his, 
You know when they, this flex bars? Yeah. Like, those flex bars are wide. Like, yeah. Like, oh my God, friend, like yeah. I've never seen a rapper where his flex bars are just dry. Like, it's kind of corny. You don't make me feel yeah, like, like I want to get money. Because like, J. Cole... Like, I know he has money. That's the thing, because like, J. Cole hasn't lived that life. So you know it's like... So right, why are like, you doing that? Like, yeah, it's corny, bro. That's what it is. Yeah, Regular dude, he, that's his. That's his thing. Nah, he really is. Yeah. Um, but shit, the way I intake new music, I, I got titles, so like they really be on it, like the suggested new um, songs oh, or whatever no, the case right. is. So if I see somebody that I'm familiar with, I click on the bitch, and if I like it once or twice, then I'll mm-hmm. download it. If not, I'll just let it go. Mm-hmm. As far as albums are concerned, like if I'm looking forward to an album, like I usually be listening to that shit off as soon as the shit drop, twelve a.m. You know what I'm saying? I'm in, in my mood, and I would usually li- listen to it like. Probably three times within a week, like you. Um, but yeah, man, no, nah, the title. I, 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 I want to be an advocate for title, bro. Yeah. Uh, let me just real quick. Nah, you definitely have title is that yeah. shit, bro. You get it for free, you pay for it. I, I had it for free initially, but then I started paying for it. It was fine. It's fine. It's hmm. fine, man. Nah, it I know is. You don't like young. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just wondering. I'm, like he makes me want to try title. Bro, it's that every ass single valid. time I download it for free. Me, the navigation on it is a little wacky. Though. They, they updated it. Oh, they updated it. Yeah. Okay. But um, you brought a good point about the songs. Like, if I can't get past a song, or if I can't fuck with you by like the fourth or fifth song, then I'm gonna mm. turn that shit off too, yeah. bro. Like, what do you? What? What am I wasting my time for? Yeah. Not yeah for shout me. out to that new song that Brent Fires and Drake. Nah, yeah, I, I still don't... listen to that shit. No, I'm not gonna front. That shit is heat. I've been trying to I've tell niggas about Brent. Are Drake bro. singing on it. No. Nah, rapping. Rap. Was rapping? Nah, rapping. Rap, 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 but Brent is singing rap, on it. Though. I don't really care. I don't really okay. care for Jake's part. Like Jake, Jake did his thing. But, but he, he just yeah, really he just added it. on to it. That's a Brent song. That's okay. Brent on Neptune's Because Brent did what like three, hmm. three, was it, three verses. It wasn't on really that, a Neptune's beat. It's dead a Neptune's. Nah, beat. nah. It's 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 what people call it. I had the dun dun dun. I had that. Nah, actually, it didn't have that. It's like it's like um, it's a new age like nah, not new age like like what era of Pharrell is that like. That's that's the free. It's free. like no, nah, it's like a little bit after in my mind. Like it's not, it's not. You're not gonna get the four count. Oh, you don't get the four but, count. But you okay. can tell they made it though. Okay, like, for sure. It, it you got the call it a mix of the beat. I think it's fine. It's his percussions in there for sure. But that's a fact. It's just not like the keys are different. Mm, okay. The chords. Okay. That shit is fire though. I really like that song. No chords. That's what I'm trying to say. There's no chords. Hmm. <laughs> Nah, I'm weak because my family text chat is going off right now, and like there's a they use my cousin's old number is in there, so like they're sending like a Zoom we're supposed to have later on tonight, and like the guy keeps he's been saying since like yesterday, yo, <laughs> this is take, not... take me out, and like <laughs> but my aunt is not that tech savvy, so she's like once she probably thinks my cousin's like playing, so like she thinks <laughs> like so it's just mad playing to watch the progression. And she's sorry, I got bad sidetracked just now. <laughs> Especially when one of them have the the the, the green bean. Yeah, right. bro, oh, that's tough. But sorry, sorry, I was mad sidetracked. We are gonna move to the next topic. A bunch of, uh, microphone check. Um, let's go here. What is a classic for the moment? This was raised. raised. So what you, you mean by that? Break that down. It's funny enough, this conversation stemmed from a conversation we had on, on, on Clubhouse. Hmm. Remember when we talk about like classic and we, I think we were talking about future projects mm-hmm. and then we were talking about what it's time to be alive. Mm-hmm. And everyone was like saying like, yo, this is a classic album. And I was tripping. like really, I was really surprised at how much people consider that a classic album. And me and you were the only ones that said it wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, yo, it, it was good for the time. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think it was a classic. A lot like, of niggas don't know what a classic is. That's what. That's another. A lot thing. of niggas be attaching nostalgia to classics. That's what I'm saying. That that mm. that too. Mm. That, and like you said, you brought up a good point where this conversation is probably going to lead to like, just like classic. I feel like involves timelessness. Mm. Exactly. So like, feel me. If, if the music or the time sounds dated, then is it really a classic no. or is it a classic for the moment? Like I said, because yeah. respectfully. Like the young jock song is going down, and that song was a classic. I'm not trying to hear that shit right now. When I hear that song, I kind of get cringy. Like, <laughs> cringy. I'm not, I'm not, nah, a lot like, of that early, that 2000 era or something, like, yeah. Yeah. Moments, yeah. I'm not going front. Like, I'm mad at how hard I cranked that yeah. Soldier Boy. I cranked the fuck out the Soldier Bro, Boy. I knew every step. Don't tr- <laughs> listen. I ain't going front. Soldier Boy got some classics. I don't want to hear that shit. No, he do. He do. He do. I don't get cringy on Soldier Boy. I'm yeah. Like, but during that, that verse, I, I was like, ooh. Like, he has some super hitters. Yeah. Super, oh, super, super, super hitters. But, yeah, he didn't play a lot of good shit. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, he didn't play Sam Jalen. And he, and he, and he didn't play Outer Space Flow. Mm-mm-mm. Would have killed him with that. Like my diamond sarcastic. Yo, my wrist wrapped in plastic. Come on, stop it, man. 
soldier, man. Like, stop playing nah, with that, we already had a soldier appreciation, man. We nah, did, but did that. That, that's a great point. Like, the uh, um, like it's going down. Like, that's a great example. Like, yeah. the... Shit, what, what is the classic album then? I'll like, tell you what, what the would you consider is. as a classic album? I'll tell you what a classic album. album is. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Classic, uh, huh? A classic yeah. rap album. Yeah. Bro, it don't matter what album type of genre it is. A classic album is top to bottom, that shit hit. Right. Uh, it's top to bottom, that shit influenced the time. It's top to bottom, that shit. You can listen still, to it right still, now. Still, still going to hit the same way it hit when you bumped it 10 years ago. Okay. That's what a classic album is. Like, a classic album to me, looks like one I can do off the top of my head. Um... Like college dropout, mm. like that's a that's, that's a, a classic, classic that's a classic that's album. A classic, classic. Like um, I think he had a couple yeah, he has at least yeah. three. Like yeah, me, three me, like Miss Education, Lauryn Hill, yeah. that's a classic album. Mm. Um, Thriller, that's a classic yeah. album. Yeah. Thriller was the first thing that came to my mind. Like you bro. feel me? Like shit like that is a classic album. I'll be taking it to rock. Like fucking um. I feel like Fifty Cent's Get Rich is a, is a classic album. Yeah, that's a, that's a that supreme. Always gonna do, that's and like I think to sum yeah. it up, it's basically just like. Niggas gonna talk about New York, I'm putting that like here. Yeah, like that has to be on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to sum it up, I think like a classic album, it just has to stand the test of time. Like it literally just has to be able to be that type of like, it gotta it's be, just, and it gotta be fire. It's all bottom. good music. Like the young jock joint, it's not really good music. It's, it's not like really, yeah. it it's was like, good for the it was, time itself. It matched the time. I can't say that. It might help for that. Not being good music is, is kind of. Upset. It was. Yeah. I'm not gonna call it not good music. Yeah. It's, it's dated. not. That's why I said it's dated. It was. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's not great music. It was probably good music. It's not okay. great music. I'll give you that. I'll it's not that. timeless music. Yeah. Yeah. So timeless would be great. Mm-hmm. Good music was uh, probably good for the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So that's where I live with that. But that's. that's a, it's, when it comes to the conversations with like Chris Brown and even Drake, like, mm-hmm. they don't. Do they have classic albums? I think Drake Wait, does. you don't think Drake got a classic album? He doesn't fuck with Drake, but he I, does. I think, I think Subconsciously. he has songs. <laughs> I be throwing soul in Drake's name too, but bro, Drake got classic albums. I would, the, the closest to me, I think he has a classic, and people don't feel me, it's Nothing Was The Same. That's definitely a classic That's album. That's a classic, and it's Take Care is a classic. Yeah. I wouldn't call Nothing Was The Same as a classic. Wow. What, are you going to say Take Care? No. If wow. Hmm? What's, what, what, what do you think is his classic album? My classic album for me, for Drake, is either So Far Gone is not an album, or um, If You're Reading This Is Too Late. Okay, I, I mean, I'm not, not so far gone. If you're reading this, I feel like it's a very, it's a very slept on album by Drake. Nah, it yeah. definitely isn't like, one as like hot. I think it's top three Drake. That, that shit actually might become a classic over here because it's still aged perfectly. Yeah, nah, yeah. Like, like in the moment, people appreciate it, but I still feel like people don't appreciate it enough. Exactly. And it's gaining still momentum, like in Drake's catalog. Like take care when you bump take care now, it don't hit the same. Hit the I same. promise, I promise don't you, don't hit the same. same. As like, like I know, like we all had our most of the album, but now it don't hit the same. Mm-mm. But if you're but to me, nothing was the same. It's his best rapping. I agree. Mm-hmm. It was his best rapping, and I don't know. Easily, of one song. Easily, his best rapping. How you feel about Wet Dream? I hate worse behavior. Worse. I hate, <laughs> I hate worse behavior with a passion. <laughs> Outside of that song, all the songs hit. The I really like the flow in that. I know. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, is that, so beat is kind of, yeah, that is one of the corniest Drake songs I've ever heard in my life. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But like I said, a classic. Ooh, people don't that? understand how prestigious of a word classic is, and a classic got to be hidden the whole way through. And right. every this is too late hits the whole way through. I'm not gonna lie. And that's a lot of songs. That's a nah, lot yeah, of songs. It's definitely like what 15, 16, yeah. 16 songs. Yeah, I it was like 18. It's mm-hmm. around. It's in the. It's in the high teens. Yeah. That's a fact. But that shit hit the whole way through. So. I think we we already we answered the question. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We yeah. answered it. All right, so the last thing we got in the microphone check segment is in our lifetime, who had the best run? And it could be from any genre. Who do you think has had had the best run? Or who had one of the better runs? I feel like off the top, Lil Wayne and his dominance in the music industry when we were ten to what was it, 15? Nah, it was a long time, bro. How old it was 10 you? to 12 is when he had it. Like, nobody was t- telling him nothing. To my, how old are you? How old, how old are you? 25. 25? Yeah. Was it fifth grade? For my fourth, fifth grade, yeah. Bro, he had it for a minute. It was nah, fourth grade for y'all? You sure? Nah, it was like <laughs> at least sixth grade. Sixth grade. It was like sixth grade. Because I was, it was I was, I was in like fourth grade when it started. Fifth grade, because I remember when we. Because I remember walking to my man's crib, bumping. <laughs> no, that's a fact. Wayne will get you in trouble. Nah, little, so little Wayne, like I to this day never seen some shit like that. Bro. We he talking about the mixtape run, mixtape run, album run. He was on everybody Future fucking run. soul. Future like run. he was okay. just going crazy, winning all types of fucking awards. Like he just had the game, bro. Like in his hands, in his fucking hands. Like hmm. it was dominance upon dominance type shit. I was. Uh, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead, yeah. If I had to pick, I'm gonna have to 
if I had to pick first one, I always comes to my mind because this is even pre internet days. I saw 50 Cent. Oh, I knew he was going to say that. Boy, I'm not going to lie, bro. I knew he was going to say that. To come from, to come from nowhere, that's, that's, probably, nowhere, that's probably the best. And then, like, to dominate for literally the first half of that decade, the 2000, what was it? At 2000, least, like from 2002 to like 2005. At least three, six, three to five years. At least it was only three years. That nigga had a movie, like filming movies, clothes, fucking the music was crazy. The nigga had Dr. Dre Eminem in his corner. Like, how can you not succeed? Like, yeah, the niggas nigga wearing bulletproof vests. <laughs> For me, he had a video game. Yeah. The nigga, for me, I, he was doing shit I had never seen nobody do at that time, bro. Nah, I definitely. Had I had bulletproof. I was playing with 50 Cent. I had bulletproof. We talking about music. My son was the violin war guy. The movement, like the big, the biggest run. I consider that all a run. Mm. Like for me, because. That shit just kept going. Vitamin water. But like, the music in itself too. It's like when he released um Get Rich or Die Trying, like after that it was the mixtapes and, and, and um getting and G Unit out there. Out mm-hmm. facts. Like and like nah, fifty bro, had it too, I ain't gonna lie. Fifty had it, bro. Hmm. 50 had it. I feel y'all. And the pause the beefs too, it came like Nah, he, yeah, he, he, he had, he, like, he had, he had the beef. And I was a little static. kid, I'm just watching, I'm just like, yo, this the he, had, no, he, he was, had, he he was like Superman. Man. He was, he was like Superman. Super he had all of us wearing do rags and shit. I had a Caesar, bro. The low, nah, yeah, low like cut. everybody, like people, all the Caribbean. Bro, the, everybody Blue knew rags. who Fifty Cent was. They knew it, like I was when it came to rap. Absolutely. It was like Fifty Cent, Jay Z. You yeah. knew who both those characters were <laughs> at that time period. The reason why I say Fifty, I don't get it, is just because his two, the two out. He only had two like amazing albums to me. Like get what you're not trying in the mask. That's a fact. Yeah, it was back to back. The get, get the I think it's called the get up or the get <laughs> self, the, self destruct. Power of the dollar was a mixtape. I'm talking about the third album. I, I think it was called self destruct. Before I self destruct was on. He went head up with Kanye. No, oh, that, nah, was that was Curtis. No, that was Curtis. Curtis. Yeah. Curtis is after mm-hmm. massacre. That's, That's why I just looked it up. I'm like, I'm trying to see if the 50 million more albums on Curtis. I think. I feel like 2000. Yeah, after Curtis when Kanye beat him. Yeah, that was the cut. That was the yeah. Was cut off. It's funny because that's what I was gonna say. Kanye got the best run I've ever witnessed in my life, honestly, because. That nigga was He's from, so much from college. That run right? from college dropout exactly. to Yeezus. To Yeezus. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to tell you why. Because college dropout, before that, he was already doing all the beats. Had a whole bunch of number ones. Dropped college dropout. And now he op- every Kanye album, to me, it was, he, he changed, he changed music. And to me, that's, that's a crazy ass thing to do. Yeah. For like, I think it was College Dropout, Lay Reg, Graduation, 808s, My Be Rush of Fantasy, and Yeezus. All them albums changed music. Like every time you stepped out, you changed music. And every time you stepped out, you Wait, charted. Lay Registration changed music? Yes, nigga. All them albums changed music, bro. How would you say that? I would say, yeah, would I say that's, that? that's a tough one. I, would say how, how, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to put College Dropout and Lay Registration's Impact in okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Because at yeah, the cause, okay. yeah, combined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was the same, it was the same yeah, vibe. Yeah. You feel me? Because, like, with them <laughs> albums, bro, like, that was a time when hip hop was like super like aggression, yeah, gangster, you, like, drug dealing. Yeah, he was definitely against the grain. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. He was the first nigga to step out on the block. Not the first nigga, because, you know, there was a whole different era of hip hop before that. Right. But the first nigga at that time to step out and not have to do all of that and mm-hmm. still chart and still be respected. And that opened up a whole lane for a whole bunch of shit we would have never had if Kanye didn't do that. So that's that impact of those two albums. And then you have Graduation. That sound in itself, yeah. that Simple speaks for crazy. itself. That's the nigga saw Simple because it's only after that even you, more. You feel me? And then like 808s, that also was another one that broke boundaries. That you feel me? That broke boundaries yeah. sonically and it broke boundaries with subject matter because a lot of people wasn't talking about their depression and the oh. shit they were going through on the track like that. Mm-hmm. And then you got Dark Twisted mm-hmm. Fantasy. That shit it's speaks for album. itself. You feel me? Classic Sorry. album. And then Yeezus Yeezus split that whole shit In his head We wouldn't even have SoundCloud Mumble Rap or like you like, you like I like Yeezus When it first came out I did yeah, I, I, did. Too, yeah, I did I wouldn't go to that now But I, I bumped it a few times I, you, you feel I wouldn't me? go to that now though Like that, that was, we, we wouldn't have Travis Scott We wouldn't have None of these Croner niggas That be singing In order to We wouldn't have No future None of that shit Without, without Yeezus It was more important Than niggas giving yeah. credit for You, you, you feel sure. me It definitely is important I just don't listen to it No you for know, sure I feel you I feel you Like we said It could be good And not for you, you know what I'm saying? Definitely was yeah. Time and mm-hmm. So that shit was crazy. that's my that's my um, reason for Kanye. It's so crazy to me because during that run, it's like Kanye came back 
twice. Like, yeah. really? like yeah. that's what makes it crazy because I never considered it one run. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like it was always like a different version. But yeah. the thing about it was he took a lot of breaks. That's what I'm saying. He took a lot of breaks. Yeah. You feel me? And, and, and that's what made it more impactful in itself because Kanye... Is it considered a run still if you take a break? Yes, because it wasn't like he disappeared. He was still on features. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he was still around. And he was still producing. Features, yeah. features do count. He, he, he yeah. was still doing features. He was still producing. So it's like that, oh, yeah. that whole time he was relevant and he was one of the number one guys. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's still, still a run. He still is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he still is. He's still number one. Yeah, exactly. Much. Yeah. Um, shoot. He took mine. Right mine was... Yeah. yeah I just want to say that. Everyone mine was going to be Kanye. I feel like only people left to say is either Drake or like Hove, if you well, talk... T-Pain. T-Pain's a good one. It was a little shorter T-Pain's than... T-Pain's rain run wasn't that crazy. Yes, I'm saying it was a little short. It was what? short. It, it was, was like kind of short. Years. It wasn't that long. But, also, but it was impactful, though. It was. This is kind of artist, too, right? Because you, know, you could also add like the Neptunes. Oh, you could, you could put. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking about saying George, Pharrell George and the Neptunes. Yeah. For me, like, it's a lot of people that like. Metro's run was crazy, Metro's too. Run was crazy. Metro! For me, even Future's run was crazy. Yeah. 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 Future might be top five runs I've ever seen in my life, too. That's crazy. Because you know we had tape? dropped like four straight yeah, bangers in a row, right? From the Sierra breakup mm-hmm. to. I guess what it's called. DS2. Not, oh, yeah, what it's called to be live. Yeah, yeah, you're right. What was that? A year and a half. Mm-hmm. I felt like Future just literally mixtape mix album mixtape that's mix it like, nah he was lighting us up with, like, <laughs> with, yeah, with like, music I was like a Wayne I've never seen some shit like that from yeah. artists like, and they all hit like it's yeah. some sort of way that's how he came back with Purple Rain too so that's Purple insane. Rain is you be talking about that yeah. we gonna have a, we gonna have a Future's like I prefer our top uh, future, future projects, projects. Now that, that's an interesting conversation because like Future has given us different shit. So like it's an interesting conversation. People, to see what, so, like, it's, people praise Hendrix. Yeah. And like I love Hendrix, but it's just not my preferred. Still to this day, I can't get. I got that much five to six I tracks on that I go back to though. Yeah. Wait, what? I know, I know, it's blasphemous. What? I'm not even gonna get into Wait, that. What did you say? I prefer Purple Rain over Hendrix. That's what? gonna we're gonna be here all day if I all get right, into that. Yeah, I I don't know if I get behind that. That I don't know. Like, Future's the yellow color, right? Huh. Niggas is crazy. I was just thinking in my job over here real quick. Let me just get this in real quick. If Young Boy made an R&B album how Future made Hendrix, he, everyone would love him. Well, um, NBA Young Boy? Mm-hmm. Now, the reason I know that to be true, hear me out, on Tyler's new album, yeah. NBA Young Boy has a verse on there. It's a little more melodic than he usually is. He, he's very that's melodic already on like, his own shit, though. Isn't he already melodic? He, he is. Know. I mean, but you know that's where rap is at now. That like, yeah, that, I'm but, not like, a lot of people. I mean, NBA might be one of the first. He's my favorite artist right now. I, you definitely I see that a lot on the yeah. internet. A lot of people. He's not music. whack, bro. He's I, not whack. He's dead not whack. He, I think he suffers from, like, he drops so much music. He drops so much music he do. to me. And it's he like, got a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay the bills. He's definitely not, definitely not whack. He's equated to like the boozy of his mm. of his time, like right. Mm. Now. He better than boozy, yeah, yeah like, for sure. Yeah, because boozy ain't really have a, like this big of a reign, yeah, like, yeah. nationally. Like, cause wow. even like, even if you put the internet back in boozy's time, I don't think boozy does what NBA YoungBoy does. Years. Yeah. I, a lot of the real niggas fuck with, with NBA. That's why I just keep trying to get into him. Like, for me, he has always a song or two that I like, but the Projects is crazy. I don't know if I could ever bump a full NBA project. Yeah. Bump top. Top? That's his most recent one. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. shit fire. Yeah, but we got to close out this segment. So thank y'all. That was a very good segment. I enjoyed that. Uh, what did I say we going to go next? Oh, yeah. So with that being said, we're about to head into the Cookie Crumbs segment. For those of you that don't know, Cookie Crumbs is our terminology we came up with. Just to describe any topics that deal with relationships interactions with between male and female that's not relationships but just you know on the regular just any human interaction love sex whatever it's all in there so with that being said I'm gonna drop that drop all right so with that being said here's a topic i wanted to think about this i feel like i was reminiscing back in the day and i was like you know how much work it was to get like some titties <laughs> sent to your phone? You know how much work that was? It wasn't that much work for me. I can't lie. All right. Well, Ooh. he's Prince Charming over here. <laughs> Heard it. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm talking. I'm going to let you. I'm but like, you. it wasn't hard. Like, it was impossible. But it was definitely more it so. It wasn't as easy. It wasn't easy. I would say it was like intermediate level. 
You know what I'm saying? It was like you had to really talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, there was some some skeezers. You know what I'm it saying? It mattered a lot more. <laughs> there was, you know, you don't get it off the bat, but like for the most part, if there was a John that you really, really wanted, like, and she was really fire, more of the times than not, she wasn't giving up like that. Like the fire Johns back in the day wasn't really giving it up like that. You know what That's I'm saying? That's when they wasn't sucking dick. Yeah, like <laughs> you know. your pussy was taboo. <laughs> Still, like it was crazy, bro. So I'm just reminiscing on like that, and that brought up me just saying like just wanted to talk about the evolution of just how much it's changed and how like where did this even start like what do you think was the catalyst for how fast we've turned from oh no I don't even suck dick to now I can't even scroll pat through my feed without this girl does OnlyFans now she's twerking this I like, guess crazy now the, the, nah Bernice Jack Bernice People really? people really don't understand the influence that Bernice has on our modern culture with women. People don't people don't give her the credit. You think like Bernice is like the the Beyonce of that that world? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when Drake got spotted with her, and that oh, was yeah. what like blew her up and shit. Yeah. And like niggas went to Instagram, and it was over after that. Every ever since then, the Drake effect is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ever since then, the That's IG like, model thing has become a thing because of that. That's like I thing. like I'm not gonna lie. Like there were people before her, like Kaylin Garcia. And bitches like that. I feel like India Love is the first uh, yeah. IG model. Yeah, because she, because she, because she came after like that Bernice shit. Because Bernice was in the early stages, but I feel like after that Bernice shit, all these girls saw how possible it was to get and lit and get rich off of their looks and their bodies and looking good. <laughs> and then it, they never looked back. So. It's just crazy to me because like growing up. Nigga, niggas had smut pages. Mm -hmm. Bitches is getting shamed for sending a nigga a photo of whatever, and they sharing that shit on the internet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Girls was going through it at the time, bro. Mm -hmm. Now, I could only imagine how it is in high school. Like, girls probably got fucking OnlyFans in high school for all we know, bro. Bro, like, I, they probably be that's, lying. No, no, no you, brought up, you brought up a good point. But I'm saying, you nigga, they might be how they gonna, how they gonna know? Because yeah. I'm thinking they gonna follow what we, we're the older ones. ones. Exactly. They gonna follow what they do. Bro, it might be really nasty right now, bro. Because you know what I'm saying? You're horny out of control that. in high school. Yo. You're yeah, out of control Yo, hormones in like, high school. I, I was going to say, like, I, I thought this was conversation. This is going to get a little dark for me. Nah, bro. <laughs> it really... I was thinking about how, like, the sexting game has gotten crazy to me. Where, like, shorties is having blue... Like, you can get... I've seen the best sexting... Uh, new pics ever like it nowadays like right shoot. yeah nowadays you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. yo, <laughs> with that rainbow with that rainbow it was like the shit from like it was in front of like a uh, vanity mirror <laughs> <laughs> it was like mad art artistic well, like, no nah, yeah it was crazy artistic. they was giving playboy vibes like, oh, like this is amazing to me like, yeah it's so much like, like this is this is great <laughs> 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 it's funny because during the clubhouse conversation, he was talking just like this, like he was critiquing, like, "Oh my god, I can't believe the creativity." <laughs> 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 Maybe it's also the type of woman I used to deal with. Um, used to deal with for me. I'm used to the Project Mirror. Like, 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 like I'm used to see. I, I know that background. And I'm like, yo, like, this could definitely be used in the magazine right now. Like, I really appreciate this. Like, nah, cause quick. really think about it, bro. Cause back to what I said about it not being that hard for me to get pictures like that. Like, that's not me trying to stun or whatever. Like, that's real shit, bro. When I got my phone at 13, that was the first time I ever got at a sidekick uh, slide. slide. <laughs> Nigga, like, within three weeks, I was getting pictures of titties set to my mm -hmm. phone. Like, this is a 14-year-old girl sending me this at 13, <laughs> bro. Like, this is crazy. After that, it was, you know what I'm saying? I got the BBM. Like, it was really bugging. So, I off of that, era. I could only imagine how it is now. Niggas got, everybody got iPhones, bro. Everybody time, got a fucking iPhone, time. bro. It's I'm gonna be scared for when we have children. Like I do not know if I'm having kids. Hmm? Oh yeah, virtual nudes, oh, yeah. Virtual nudes is crazy. Nudes. Yeah, 3D nudes. Go open it like this. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nah, the hologram nudes will go crazy. Hologram nudes. Watch it, bro. That'd go crazy. Like imagine a hologram like like new video. Yeah, yeah. Just watching it right here, like mad personalized, bro. Because they already got the virtual reality shits they be yeah. doing now. That shit is crazy. Imagine the shit is like not that I've tried it or anything. Awesome, like, <laughs> shit. Yo, you know the is coming. You know what I think it is, bro? I think Tum the end of Tumblr, because I don't know if y'all remember that. Like, mm -hmm. I think it was 2017, 16, probably. Or a little it wasn't earlier. that late. It was like 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. 15. 2015. Like, because you know Tumblr was like the hub for sexual shit. Like, yeah. 
So once they took that away, those creatives probably were like, <laughs> yeah, we, need, we need some place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I probably played that, a part too. Yeah. 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 We did type cold. Nah, because my, I'm thinking of Tumblr. My man too, I used to, Ray knows this person. My man too, I used to live a room with in um, college. He's my friend too. Like some girl came up to us. He's like, you you know this kid? I'm not gonna say his name on here. She, I was like, yeah, like that's my roommate, that's my guy. She was like, we found his nudes on Tumblr. What I'm the like, fuck? I'm like, what? <laughs> and then like, I don't know what you're talking about. You do, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> not in that way. You, <laughs> you met him before. <laughs> you met him before. You've met him before. I, this is all knowledge. I'm not. I'm not you've knowledge. met him before. You don't know that, but you've met him before. I'll clear that up for you. I'll clear that. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But so, <laughs> so me and my friends confronted him because he was like, "Yo, when are you taking these pictures, brother?" Because niggas were saying it was mad artistic. <laughs> or the Tumblr. I'm like, "Why are you doing this?" He was like, "You know, man. You know, it just I'm expressing myself." Man. Like, just, <laughs> Is he like one of them niggas that's like really like Ooh. Erica Baduish? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, I know. I <laughs> <laughs> See, look, now, I just had to bring that up. That was just a funny moment in my life. So. It's but, funny, though. For sex, though, I feel like it just mattered a lot more to, like, see titties on your phone. But, like, now you go on Instagram and, like, all you see is not the nipple. Like, that's the only thing you don't see. You so, know, like. Oh. I have, yo, <laughs> nah, bro, that's, that's quality really television, that bro. Bro, bro. <laughs> that's quality bro. television. Bro. I'm, this is coming from a person I love reality TV from Flavor of Love Days. That's I've that's the never, vibes. I've never seen. Yes, this is some next like Flavor nah, of Love. It's, this, is, this might change the game. I'm gonna hold you. Zeus is changing the game. <laughs> Zeus is changing the game. Man. Zeus, that I haven't seen this much titty in a very long time. It's mad titty. The concept of the show is fucking mm-hmm. wacky. Just mm-hmm. out here pimping shorties out. <laughs> like yo Nah it's crazy I'm not gonna lie Natural on the show bro Miss you know Miss Miss I know who Miss Natural is Yo If y'all watch Listen I do know bro If y'all If y'all like to engage And you know Porn sometimes <laughs> Yo Miss Natural <laughs> Is a very good outlet she's, For niggas so She's been She's been she's she's Nah cause the, the One clip I saw well, I seen multiple clips But the one clip I seen I, I could remember Not nah, with that But the fucking When she was about to Beat the bitch up For coughing yeah. I'm like, oh, what's going on? Bro, pimping. She was like, who you coughing at? That's what, <laughs> like, what the bro? fuck? She is pimping on that show. She's saying shit, but I'm just like, yo, like, this is something to pimp with that say. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him. Madam Jocelyn. But the shit is hilariously. Like, it's hilarious content. I'm not going to find, like, hmm. it's, I, I, can, I cannot wait for the reunion. I cannot wait. <laughs> oh, it's over now. Nah, nah. It's one more episode, which mm-hmm. the niggas is taking two weeks to do. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, it's coming out next week. Next weekend, mm-hmm. and after that, I'm assuming it's a re- the reunion. Oh, okay. So for me, I'm not gonna lie. This might be the best reunion. I'm top five reunions. Oh my god! Lie, <laughs> yeah, we gotta get out of here. So we gotta move to the free free segment. Uh, random drop, random drop, random drop. All right, boom. So free free. All that don't know free free is just a random segment. We put anything in this category. Question we have for Free Free today is, what moment in your life made you change the way you view things? And this can range from anything. I'll, I'll start. Oh, go ahead. My fault. No, um, ahead. Mostly, well, you know, y'all niggas know I don't drink. Mm-hmm. That's because my dad, alcoholic. Mm-hmm. There were numerous occasions where he would come home late and just be acting like a fool. But there was just one day in particular, like, he was so soulless, bro. Like, so, like, stumbling all over the place. My, my mom trying to take care of him. The nigga was so drunk, he peed on my PlayStation 2 games. Yo, I know niggas shouldn't be laughing, but that's Bro, good. nah, y'all could laugh, bro. Like, that was really wacky. It was really... And I seen that, I'm like, there's no way I'm ever taking a sip of alcohol <laughs> a day that, in my life. And I since I was 12 when that happened, since then, y'all know I've never <laughs> taken a sip of alcohol ever, bro. That's like... Serious. Ever Wait ever yeah. Like before that You know when And little celib- celebratory things mm-hmm. Like um, parents will give you Little sips of yeah, champagne yeah, yeah. Like I've tasted champagne before But since that day I'm like I'm never touching a bottle bro That's wild Like uh, did, did your game still work? Hmm? Did your game still work? Hey, it did <laughs> <laughs> You gotta hear some It was like three cases You know what I'm saying and one, one of them was in the system The other ones It was It, it, it worked We was good We was good you feel me? No point, point. That was a terrible point. That was a terrible wor- choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 
<laughs> All right, so, so moving along. Um, for me, um, I can't even. S- <laughs> that was great. I can't. I can't even say for me it's been a specific moment, but it's just over time. When I was a kid, I started to like because I at some point in my life I had realized that everybody is not that different. Like everybody walks around and has their own little complex living situation, their complex brain. So I'd be thinking to myself, like when I was younger, like nobody's brain works like mine. Like I'm. I think of things this way because of that. I'm like, yo, like everybody has their own way. Nothing. And like, you had this epiphany? Like, it just came out of nowhere? Nah, this is like when I was a kid. Cause when you were a kid, like, you're learning about life. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm learning, like, why. Like how old? I'd say about 10, mm. about 10, 11. You know what I'm saying? So, just learning, like, yo, like, people really just, like, we're not that different because everybody has their own little complex thing going on with them. So, it's, we're different, but in the same because we still have the same systems that we function by. You know what I'm saying? So, it's kind of like a weird juxtaposition almost but that's kind of what i realized over time when i was like 10 11 i'm like you're like yo he's a we call him a school bully but like he has things that make him like <laughs> emo- so, emotional and so sad. you thought deeper than an average kid is what yeah you're saying. Ten years old. yeah i was just mad i'm you're always giving niggas you, the benefit of the doubt he's a philosopher nah like yeah, i've always been an observant kid so like i just watch it and like i'm like all right so why did that happen and like i decided to break it down in my head that's how i always been all right for, for me i'll say because my son rambo is here and he will definitely appreciate this when I finished watching Six Feet Under the first time, that shit made me think about things in a totally different way. So I'll be telling you. I don't know, Six Feet Under is an HBO show, and it's one of the best shows, if not the best show, I've ever seen in my life. Mm. It, it literally will change your life. He's Remember been saying why? that for some years. It will change your life. <laughs> it will change your life. I cried at the end. I hysterically I, cried. Like, <laughs> hysterical <laughs> crazy. That's the ugly the crowd. Mm-hmm. Still, to mm-hmm. day, still to this day, the best series finale I've ever seen in my life. Mm. And again, I cried, hugged my father after, told him how much I appreciated him. Mm. All this. Off one show. That's very true. Feel me? So again, because of that show, that was one of the few times where I was like, yo, I feel like life changed for me after that. As far as my perspective on life. Mm. Damn, it's funny because I was actually going to talk about Six Feet Under too. <laughs> but um, probably like the biggest change for me is like I took I took a a, a hallucinogen a, a hallucinogen drug and um I my my experience was just huh took <laughs> my experience was just like realizing like yo like. Everything is everything. Like, that was my biggest takeaway from it. Like, everyone is, we all are just a part of one big thing, but like, our experiences and everything kind of make us like separate from that. Like, and we make it about either like race or like about like how we dress or things like that. And, um, or like the fact that we're human and all things are insects or animals or whatever. When in reality, like, we're all just one thing. Like, if, every, if it wasn't for, one piece of this, there wouldn't be any of it. So that's probably kind of opened my eyes and just made me like appreciate life a little more. Cause um, I just realized everything is like working together to make this happen. And then from there, like it kind of just made me walk around with like a different appreciation for everything, honestly. Do you, do you mind sharing what um, hallucinogen it was? It was acid. Okay. Yeah, acid. I, I, acid was square. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. I, I, I never took shrooms before. Oh, uh, but um, yeah, it was acid, and that shit was crazy. But um, it was a great experience, and like after that, it just really made me realize that like we gotta stop being so hung up on shit because ain't nothing we can really do. We just we just here. We are just here, y'all. We're just here. <laughs> so in the block, we just still. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. Everything oh, just man. still. <laughs> but I think that's a good way to end it. With we we're, we're just here. We just here. And if you're making it to the end of the episode, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We've got to say that in the beginning. And we'll catch y'all next week for another episode. Do- <laughs>